Hi there, it's Scott Rockfile, back with another podcast review for you. Going to talk about the miniseries Star Wars Ahsoka, or just Ahsoka. Let me start by saying I was looking forward to this. I am a Star Wars fan from way back, but to me, the best Star Wars was the first three movies. Everything else, including the prequels, has just been filler to me. Uh, I think George Lucas tried, but didn't execute the prequels very well. I think what J.J. Abrams and other people did, tried, but didn't execute it very well. And some of the TV shows have done very well at making it feel like Star Wars, but from The Mandalorian to uh, Boba Fett to uh, Obi-Wan, They've all been okay. I didn't finish Andor, and I need to. I did like Andor. I like what they're doing with a lot of them. I will be honest. I've never watched Rebels. I've never watched Clone Wars. I tried. I got free copies of them both when I was earlier in my career on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever, and still could not get it. I just, it's cartoons in the Star Wars universe, and they're aimed a little bit younger than I am. So I just, I never got into them, and I really didn't care. So when this was coming out, I'm like, Rosaria Dawson, she's perfect for that. I love what she appeared in The Mandalorian. I love what they did with her in The Mandalorian. I was looking forward to her getting her own show. When it started, I knew we were in trouble. It, it looks great. It sounds great. It feels like Star Wars, but they started talking about a team getting back together, and they show a cartoon version of the team, and I didn't know any of the people. And they started talking about things. I know who Thrawn is. I know who Bridger is. I know who a few of the characters are because I'm very well versed in Star Wars. But overall, I felt like I'm jumping into the story halfway and I had no idea what happened before. I'm just kind of getting up to speed. Now, I've made this comment when I watch a lot of Japanese anime from back in the day. Um, A lot of Japanese movies, anyway, will drop you in at the beginning, you know, at the beginning of the film. They just kind of drop you into what's going on and you kind of have to catch up. I'm fine with that sometimes, but you have to pay off. And it feels like this was a whole series of fan service episodes that really at the end of it really went nowhere. And then nobody cared what happened at the end. Won't get into spoilers if you haven't watched it yet, but the whole idea is to stop this person from coming to the galaxy. And in the very end he does and everybody goes about their business like, Oh, well that kind of bothered me, but there's a lot of things I like about the show. I don't want to just poop on the show and say it was bad. It's very good. You know, if I assume for people that are fans of Rebels and Clone Wars, this is your jam. This was awesome. It was awesome to see live action versions of all those characters. But for somebody who had no idea how those characters got together in the first place, their adventures they'd had together, we just know that they they just stated the fact that they had known each other before and they were getting back together. Let's get the team back together. They play music and you go, okay, well, I, I didn't know what the team was to begin with. I think Dave Filoni is got the best intentions at heart. He's the guy who was behind Rebels. He basically made Rebels season five out of this show. I don't think that's a bad idea. It's time to put Luke and stuff behind us, the whole Skywalker stuff, and and get into the new generations. And, And if that passes me by because I didn't watch Rebels or whatever, I'm fine with that too. But a TV show should entertain, whether you're familiar with the background or not. And I've been able to watch a lot of like The Mandalorian. You know, I really have to know anything about Star Wars. You can still enjoy that show. A lot of the Marvel shows, you don't really have to know the superhero. You can just watch the show and enjoy the show, and it carries the character on. This one felt like the whole time that I was missing something, that I didn't know how we got to this point and why it was so important to stop this guy and why it was so important to get the team back together. I didn't know any of that stuff. Now, I think the actors and actresses all did great. I think the special effects were great. The music, like I said, it felt and looked like Star Wars, and a lot of it I really liked. I thought the lightsaber... Uh, fights were a step down from where we've been. It was too much up close. They, some dragged on and just weren't that exciting. Some were short and were, just weren't that exciting. They were okay. I thought some of the beats of things, like the action beats and things, were really well done. Wasn't a fan of the Star Whales, but if you're into that, that's great. Wasn't a fan of the cute turtle people, but I'm not a fan of the Ewoks either. Um, you know, it had a lot of good stuff in it and some okay stuff. But overall, I just... I didn't care from, I watched the end of it because I thought each episode was visually interesting. I like Ray Stevenson's character. I like the new bad Jedi characters they brought in, but that kind of ended with them just kind of hanging out at the end too. It's going somewhere. Does it lead to a a movie? Does it lead to a second season of a TV show? I don't know, but I don't really care either. There was nothing that endeared me to this in all of the episodes I watched. Again, I'm not pooping. It was well-made it just isn't as a didn't work as a TV show, so to speak. It it didn't 
it should bring me in as a fan, even if I'm not a fan. I should be able to catch up to the story and know the relationships, and I just never felt I did. So by the end of it, it was a big meh, because the, the thing that they tried to avoid happening happened, and they all went off on their separate ways. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, maybe I missed something from Rebels? Anyway, I think they, again, did a good shot. They just, it, it felt too much like a primer for things to come and not enough of a, a well-contained story. What I liked about, it's apples and oranges to compare Marvel and Star Wars, but Disney's making all these shows, right? I've talked in other podcasts about the, the filling of content. We the, the streaming services have to justify their existence by creating more content that's exclusive that you can only get with them. I understand that. But if we're churning things out just to fill holes, that's not what we should be doing. Ahsoka is a great character, and she deserved to have her own show. And it felt like every time we had a chance for her to shine, we went over to somebody else's relationship. Again, characters I didn't know, relationships I didn't know. They did a horrible job of giving us background. Just give us a five minutes of past. Here's what these guys did and show us scenes from the cartoon. I don't care. Or do it with a live action or redo it. But whatever, at least start me where I know what's going on because I, you dropped me in the middle of it and by the end of it, I still didn't know and didn't care. I think everybody does a good job. I think Rosario Dawson, she was better as Ahsoka in Mandalorian than she was in this. Maybe that's Dave Filoni's fault. Maybe that's what she was given to do. You never really know in these things. Again, it looks good, sounds good, feels like Star Wars, but all in all, at the end, meh. Maybe this is season two. Maybe I'll watch it. Maybe there's a movie. Maybe I'll watch it. I don't know. I, again, didn't finish Andor, and I want to, but it just, I don't know. I got other things to do that are more important to me. And that's a sad thing to say from a lifelong Star Wars fan who holds those first two movies in very hard, high regards. I love Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. Return of the Jedi I also like, but again, the change from making the creatures into Ewoks, they were supposed to be Wookiees. I don't know cute and toys. And I felt that's what a lot of happened in Ahsoka towards the end. We should be getting all these Jedis and anti bad Jedis and all they should all be fighting. And we were fighting zombie stormtroopers, which I guess is more interesting. I don't know. All in all, it just felt like a missed opportunity. You got really great people. You spend a lot of money on it. Looks good. Sounds good. And from episode to episode, not a whole lot happens. They get to here to get this MacGuffin. And then once the MacGuffin happens, it okay. I don't know. It just it feels like it should have more importance. But again, if you were somebody who loved Rebels and loved Clone Wars, this was probably your jam. This was probably awesome. So take my review with a, a grain of salt. But unless you're really into Ahsoka, you really don't. It's not canon yet. It's nothing you have to watch to enjoy Star Wars going forward. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it does. Hopefully this was a prequel or a mid chapter that will lead us to something that we all care about. I love Thrawn, and I love what they did with some of the other characters, but some things were underused, some things they just they just didn't focus on the things I wanted to see in the show, and they focused on other things that I, it just felt like we're wasting time here, but that's just me. I really wanted to love it. I think it's okay. I think it was passable, but I want more from Star Wars. I don't want streaming content in the Star Wars universe. I want something that makes me go, wow, that was awesome. I can't wait for the next one. really haven't had that since the beginning of The Mandalorian, I guess. More podcasts are coming up, more reviews, more conversations. Thank you so much for listening, and have a spectacular day.